Our scripture this morning is taken from Matthew, chapter 12, verses 43 through 45. Jesus was teaching his disciples and talking about what it is to be part of the kingdom of God. What the unclean spirit has gone, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places, seeking rest and finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings what its seven other spirits, more evil than itself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. So also it will be with this evil generation. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Just say no. Do you remember that? That, of course, was the slogan for Nancy Reagan's anti-drug campaign back in the early 1980s. Just say no. Well, here we are almost 40 years later, and the drug problem is worse than it's ever been. Which just goes to show you that for a lot of people, it isn't enough to just say no. That's actually true when it comes to a lot of the things that we shouldn't do. A man who lived his life as a monk learned that lesson the hard way. Unfortunately, this monk had a problem with impure thoughts. No matter what he did, he couldn't get rid of the impure thoughts. So finally, he decided to go out into the wilderness and live all by himself. As he was out there in the wilderness, he devoted his life to prayer and meditation. Then, after more than 20 years out there in the wilderness, a hiker stumbled upon the monk's cave. Wow, the hiker said, after more than 20 years of prayer and meditation, do you have any words of wisdom for me to bring back to civilization? No, the monk said, no words of wisdom. But do you know I haven't thought about a woman in over 20 years? We call them weaknesses and addictions and temptations. Jesus called them unclean spirits. And they're everywhere. An unclean spirit is when you have a problem with your temper. An unclean spirit is when you don't think that you're good enough An unclean spirit is when you drink too much or gamble too much or you talk about people behind their backs. An unclean spirit is when you think that the car that you drive and the clothes that you wear are important because it defines who you are as a person. Yes, unclean spirits are everywhere. And there's no doubt about it. When it comes to getting rid of those unclean spirits, just saying no isn't enough. You can see that by looking at the parable that Jesus told about a man with an unclean spirit. Now, you have to give this man credit. He did everything he could. He did his best to get rid of that unclean spirit. He thoroughly cleaned his house and put everything in order. In other words, he got his act together and he said no to the unclean spirit. But despite his best intentions, the parable didn't have a happy ending. 
After a while, that unclean spirit came back and brought with it seven other unclean spirits. So Jesus said, the last state of that man was worse than the first. The parable makes it very clear. When it comes to getting rid of those unclean spirits, N-O, no power, just isn't enough. You also have to have K-N-O-W, no power. K-N-O-W power is knowing that you can't beat the unclean spirits by yourself, but you can beat them with God's help. That, by the way, is exactly what anyone in Alcoholics Anonymous will tell you. They'll tell you that the first thing you need to do is turn your life over to that higher power. So K-N-O-W power is knowing that when you turn your life over to that higher power, God will fill your heart with the love that can make all things new. K-N-O-W power is knowing that when you turn yourself over to that higher power, God will fill your heart with the love that gets rid of the fear and the anger, the guilt and the shame, all the things that feed and attract those unclean spirits. That, by the way, is exactly what Jesus did when he was out in the wilderness and battling a few temptations, a few unclean spirits of his own. When he was tempted to turn stones into bread, he turned to that higher power and uh, said, it is written, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. When he was tempted to throw himself down from the pinnacle of the temple, he turned to that higher power and said, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then when he was tempted to fall down and worship Satan in exchange for all the kingdoms of the world, he again turned to that higher power and said, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. All of this is why it's important to keep working on your faith You see, when your faith is strong, it means that your heart will be full of God's love. And when your heart is full of God's love, there's no room for any of those unclean spirits. That's the point that an old Native American made one day when his grandson asked him a question. Grandfather, he said, I see that there are two wolves in my mind, and they're constantly fighting. One wolf is evil, full of hate and fear, jealousy and greed. The other wolf is good, full of kindness and compassion, humility and generosity. Ah, yes, the grandfather said, I know these two wolves very well. Yes, uh, the boy said, but grandfather, which wolf will win? The old Cherokee smiled. That is easy, my child. Which one will win? The one that you feed. So let us continue our journey of faith. And together, let us seek that love that passes all understanding. Let us seek the K-N-O-W power that power that makes life truly worth living. Amen.